First Chronicles chapter 22, pick up verse 11, David speaking to his son Solomon. Now my son, and we see the expression throughout Proverbs as Solomon writes to his son. The Lord be with thee, and prosper thou, and build the house of the Lord thy God, as he has said of thee. So David is reaching out to, Sol to Solomon. He's praying also to God for Solomon. Only the Lord give thee wisdom and understanding. And give thee charge concerning Israel. That thou mayest keep the law of the Lord thy God. Now David says wisdom and understanding. He forgets knowledge. Knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is how to apply the knowledge. And understanding is your relationship with God. Again, the thing I've always used, you can know how a car works. Wisdom is applying the application of what you know to put the car in action, how to use the car, drive the car. And understanding the relationship with God is you can drive a car to pick up people, go to ministries, and serve the Lord. But there's no knowledge mentioned here. Second Chronicles chapter 1. Second Chronicles 1, 11. Now, God has given Solomon a blank check. Ask whatever you want. And Solomon asks God, Wisdom, verse 10. Psalmist replied, Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before the people who can judge this thy people that is so great. So David asked for wisdom and understanding. Solomon asked for wisdom and knowledge. No understanding. And God said to Solomon, because this was in thy heart, in the heart, and thou hast asked, thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thy enemies, neither yet hast thou that neither yet has asked long life. Neither yet has asked long life, but has asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people. Over whom I have made the king. So Solomon asked God. Said, give me wisdom. Give me know how to apply what I know. And give me knowledge. And that's why he writes Proverbs. That's why he writes the book of Ecclesiastes. But understanding. He does not have. And then he goes off. And marries all these wives. And goes for all these gods. And builds the temples. And builds these things for these other gods. Because he has no understanding of God. Where David prayed. Wisdom and understanding. Never mind the knowledge. Probably use the knowledge. Is wisdom. And then apply it to God. And remember David is after God's own heart. Solomon though right with God. And has that he is the son of God. And God is his father. He's lacking that understanding of God. And that's why Ecclesiastes is a worldly book of all the pleasures under the sun. That's Solomon. Now we run into another thing, Ezekiel 28. Run into Satan, Ezekiel 28. Solomon did not get understanding from God. He got wisdom and, and knowledge. You know, knowledge will put a man in hell today. We, we as a family, we go every Saturday, Lord willing, and we preach the gospel to the people in Daytona Beach. And I tell them how the gospel of Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I tell them if there's a heaven, there's a hell. They know there's a heaven and hell. They've heard it. They know the gospel. They've heard it. They heard the words from the Bible. But there's no understanding of their relationship to God. 
They have other ways. They don't care. They don't think it's important. So when we look at Ezekiel 28, let's read about the devil. Verse 1. And let's note what he has and what he doesn't have. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyre, now this is a man, but God is going to direct to this man the devil. Thus say the Lord, because thy heart is lifted up, Satan, and thou hast said, I am a God, that's Isaiah, I will sit above the throne, I sit in the seat of God, that's the devil, in the midst of the seas, that's the location of Tyre, but in the universe, that's another story. Yet thou art a man, and not God, though thou, yeah, though thou set thy heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. Daniel was wise. Here's wisdom. Satan has wisdom. There is no secret that they can they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thy understanding. Uh oh. There is wisdom and understanding. That's what David asked God to pray for sin. There is no knowledge. Now that's kind of hard because what does what does Satan know? He doesn't know very much, evidently. And what is wisdom? He's been dealing with man since the first man. He has come from the holies of holies of heaven before the throne of God. He was above the throne of God. Man, he is wise to all things. And he is wise that he is going to damn. I don't know what percentage of men on this earth, but it's going to be the majority that will go through the broad way. And he has understanding. He knows about God. He's been there. I've never been there. He's been up to God, Job 1, Job 2. But when he, in Matthew 4, and Luke 4, I think it is, when he's tempting Jesus Christ, if thou be the Son of God, he didn't know. But he had the wisdom of the, plot, the, the, the the application of what he does know about God. Hey, there's a throne. I'll give you my throne. Understanding. Hey, God is supposed to take care of you, Jesus. I understand that. But, you know, you do it for yourself. So when you look at what David prays for Solomon, he asks for the very same thing that's given to Lucifer. The devil. Solomon gets from God. He says, listen, I want understanding and I want knowledge. you got to have all three. Now, the lack of understanding for Solomon, he goes out and, and he serves all the gods of the land. David in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and he commits a vile sin. He gets down with his heart. His heart is broken to God. And God says, even the Old Testament law, I forgive you. I gotta give you consequences, but I I forgive you. God knowing, if you go back to Chronicles, God knowing what Satan would be, God has given David say, listen, he's my son. And he's going to sin, he's going to have iniquity. I'm gonna chastise him, but I am not gonna take my mercy and grace from him as I did as Saul, as he did in Lucifer. And Lucifer, who does not have Satan, who does not have that knowledge, he doesn't know. And a lot of people say, well, he knows his end is short and all that. And you find phrases like that in the Bible. But I think he's just as much as dark. Because Jesus, when he's questioned about the times, he says, only my father knows. Not even Satan knows. As far as the times of God's plan, the knowledge only goes to God the Father and Jesus now as he sits with the Father. In order to be proper in our life, we've got to have the balance of all three. We've got to know about God. We've got to know about the Bible. We've got to know about sin. And then we've got to have that wisdom to apply what we know. 
We can know all about sin, but we got to have wisdom how to fight that sin. We can know the Bible, but we got to have wisdom how to apply the Bible. And understanding our relationship to God. So when we see verse 12, only the Lord God give thee wisdom and understanding. In the eyes of David, whose heart is right before God, those are the two key things. And there's no knowledge mentioned. And give thee charge concerning Israel, that thou mayest keep the law of the Lord thy God. And he won't. We know already by reading our Bibles, Solomon does not keep that law. Is he in heaven because he worshiped other gods, which the Bible says? He says, um, verse 10, He shall build a house for my name. After that, he sins. He shall be my son, and I will be his father. And I will establish his throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. And later on, when we went to Samuel and all that, and we went to chapter 17, we read that, I'm going to chastise them. And we saw that as the Christian, we cannot lose our souls, but God can chastise us. So we must be lacking understanding. Because we don't have that reverence. So listen, when we step out and sin, we're not thinking about God. Why did I sin? God was not in, in your heart. Or, number two, you have no fear of God. You're thinking about God, but I don't care about the consequences. And that's a deadly ground. And lay out, when you read in your Bible, when it mentions, very few places does it mention wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in one place. Jesus Christ had all knowledge, he had all understanding, and he had all wisdom. Solomon lacked the uh, understanding. The devil lacked knowledge. David put wisdom and understanding as more important. Verse 13. Then shalt thou prosper. If you do the law, you keep. As long as he, Solomon is doing right and doing what he's supposed to do, he's doing fine. As soon as he steps out in the realm of sin, just like us. If thou takest heed to fulfill the statutes and judgments which the Lord charged Moses with concerning Israel, that's the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, you got to obey all that, that's not the church. The type of Solomon being a son of God and we being a son of God, types do not go 100%. They stop at a point. At that point, for Solomon, the type of Christian with the surety that he has, it stops with us where we don't keep the statutes. We don't keep the law. We don't keep the commandments. Now, after we're saved, if we have good works and we do what we're supposed to and, and try to be good and have a clean life to God, not for salvation, but for a fellowship and a walk with God, we are rewarded. And when we walk outside and when we walk in sin, our Father will chastise us. Now, behold, in my trouble, I have prepared for the house, the Lord, a hundred thousand talents of gold. You say, well, what's the trouble? All the wars. He just told Solomon in uh, verse 8, I can't build the house because I, I'm a, I shed blood. I have shed blood. I can't do it. And he's been fighting still more and more before this chapter. Those troubles me that I have fought wars. I have fought battles. I have defended Israel because of that. It troubles me that I can't build a house. But I know one thing I can do. I can stockpile. A hundred thousand talents of gold. And that's a lot. A thousand thousand. Now that thousand thousand in the Bible is million. You don't see M I L L I O N in the Bible. There's some numbers not mentioned. But that would be a million talents of silver. And of brass, which speculates judgment, 
and iron, which has no good cause in the Bible itself, without weight. So here's the weight of gold, here's the weight of silver, but iron and brass, forget it. Don't know how much, Solomon. But well, there they are. And all that is to go to the temple. Some is going to have cedar boards we're going to read about. And he's going to cover them with gold. For it is in abundance. I guess so will be abundance. Timber. Also. So you need wood. And stone. You need stones. Have I prepared? And thou mayest add thereto. That's not it. <laughs> Solomon. Look, see those piles? I don't know where David kept it. I don't know how it is. But Solomon, you see what I, I stocked for? Yeah, that's not enough, Solomon. That's not enough. Isn't it amazing the Bible says that Judas sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver? And it says here, a thousand, thousand, a million talents of silver. Here's what that 33 pieces of silver would mount to that temple. And everything that went in that temple for silver was nothing. And he threw it down at the priest's feet and went and hung himself. And is in his own place in hell today. And now the coins, they picked them up and they, they bought a cemetery for poor people. For people who couldn't afford to bury themselves. You mean what, what, what Judas sold himself out for 30 pieces of silver built a cemetery? And what David lays out silver here, which Solomon will have to add to, he builds a miraculous house for God. It ain't a cemetery. Dead people ain't there. A dead God's not in there. And stone had prepared, thou mayest add thereto. Moreover, there are workmen with thee in abundance. There's all kinds of workmen. Hewers and workers of stone. People that work in stone. People work in timber. And all men are cunning men. Now cunning today means crafty, deceitful. That's not what cunning means in the Bible. It means skill. It means craftsmen. People who know what they're doing. They are laborers. They are expertise. Men for every manner of work. Whatever needs that temple, Solomon, you've got part of the stockpiles of materials. You need, to mo you need more. And you've got enough laborers. And it's kind of funny because when Solomon starts building and building his house and building the temple and building the, the Egyptian wife's house and he starts building this place, man, he is taxing the people. When, when Rehoboam takes over the, the kingdom, we need help, we need help. He is, man, burdening us so heavy. Relieve us. That's how hard. David says, Solomon, everyone's here. And Solomon starts taking tribute, starts taking taxes, and starts, you know, drafting people to do his building. Of gold, the silver, the brass, and the iron, there is no number. Wait a minute, I thought you said a thousand, thousands, and a hundred thousand. That must be, you know, say, well, there's a contradiction. That's just around numbers. When David says thousand, thousand, you know what? It's <laughs> we were keeping track. We lost track. Kept track again. We lost track again. Yeah, so you know what? We just don't. Well, how many masons do you have? I don't know. <laughs> They're out there. Call them. Call Fred. He, he's the foreman of them. Call Charlie. He's the foreman of them. I, I don't know. They're without number. Arise, therefore, get up. And be doing, and the Lord be with thee. Get up, Solomon, go. No work of God, God calls forth for you to sit and lay down. David also commanded all the princes of Israel to help Solomon, his son. Same. Okay, we're done with this father and son talk. We just finished it. He finishes his talk with his son, the Lord be with thee. Get up and go. Lord be with thee. Now he turns to the, the political people. He turns to those in charge of Israel. David also commanded the princes of Israel to help Solomon his son, saying, here it is, Is not the Lord your God with you? The answer would be yes. And has he not given you rest on every side 
So the peace has already begun. There it is. All the years that David fought, not even he came, against uh, Saul, against the Philistines, against Goliath, against all the battles in his kingdom. Now there comes peace for Solomon. Solomon means peace. Jerusalem means the city of peace. For he has given the inhabitants of the land, Israel, into my hand. I conquered, I fought, wars, battles. God has sent me forth as a military man to get this peace. You're not going to have peace unless you have war. And when you get the thousand year reign of the millennial rest, it comes with Jesus Christ on horseback. It comes with the Christians, his bride on mules, coming back in war with a sword in his hand. Not a dove. Not an olive leaf. He comes with a sword out of his mouth and his eyes are red hot fire. He's burning. Then once he puts down those wicked and casts them off into hell, then there's peace. And the land is subdued before the Lord and before his people. Notice how he puts the Lord first, then the people. I think, I think America says guns, guts, and God. How come God's last? Oh, okay. Now set your heart, not your head, set your heart to the people of Israel, your soul, set your heart and your soul. Your heart is who you are. Jeremiah says the heart is wicked above all things. <laughs> that soul is that eternal of you, who, where you will be after you die. To seek the Lord your God. Arise, get you get up. Solomon, get up, you get up. And build ye the sanctuary of the Lord God. To bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord. It's still out there with the tent. Where David said in the beginning, that's not good enough for God. Solomon's going to do what David wanted to do. Build a house of the Lord and the holy vessels of God. That's the table, that's the candlestick, that's the brazen altar, that's the, uh, uh, the labor, that's the spoons, that's the snuffers, and all the utensils he's talking about. Into the house that is to be built. Why? To the name of the Lord. To God be the glory. 